Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. Abdullah Zbaid with you. This is Break Your Face TV. And with us today, none other than the one bantamweight world champion, Fabricio Andrade. Fabricio, how are you, brother? I'm very good. Thank you. It's so good to have you, my man. You know, before anything else, how does it feel hearing the words world champion mentioned before your name? It feels really good, you know, as... as... I'm still getting used to it, but it definitely feels really good. Amazing, amazing. You know, you had a very impressive performance and accomplishment at One Fight Night 7. You've spoken previously about your humble beginnings, how hard your family had to work to put food on the table, uh, getting into fights when you were younger. You left your home country of Brazil, moved to China to train and live there. Um, after all the hard work that you've put in, do you have to pinch yourself sometimes to remind yourself that this is real? Yes, yes, for sure, man. Um, there's there's been like days that I wake up and then I'm like just is is unbelievable, you know. Just for the fact that uh, I'm here now, but uh, all these years that I was doing all this work and trying to get here, I already like mentalized myself being on this position for many years, you know. So being here now and remember for these many years that I have been thinking about being here and now I'm finally here, it's just like, uh, it just it makes me feel really grateful, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and was it even more satisfying considering how the first fight ended? You know, you had the title within reach, uh, an accidental low blow ends in a no contest. Now, when you take that result into consideration, did it feel like, you know, finally it's mine? What impact did that first fight have on your emotions this time around? I, I wouldn't say it's just even the first fight, you know, just like the fact that I was being doing such a good performance. I was knocking people out in the first round yeah. and I was asking to fight for the title and then they put another guy and then I asked to fight. I knock another guy and then I asked to fight for the title and they give me another guy, you know. So yeah. That was just like a, a long, long time uh, expecting to fight for the title, you know, and then I get the chance to fight for the title. And then I'm finally like, oh, I'm almost champion. And then that happened. And I'm like, I have to start all again, start the fight camp again, everything to fight for the same title. Even though like people call me champion and everything, you know, you are not the champion because you don't have the belt, you know? Mm -hmm. So then when finally, like, uh, I got the fight, I got the belt after a very hard fight, you know, after war with Lineker, it was just... Uh, it was unbelievable, you know. I was all like with a lot of like my legs was hurt, my face was would be swollen, you know, my hands was broken, but I was just like I was happy, you know, nothing else matter. I was just happy I was able to to finish the job and to put a, a end in one of my biggest goals in life, you know. Mm -hmm. And and you you took extra precautions this time around. You handed him a steel cup at the face-offs. You're not a nice memory to have going into the second fight. Do you feel that got into his head a little? Uh, a little bit, but he's a very he's a very nice guy. You know, like he yeah. always come talk to me and very respectful. You know, I think besides the fight, we was always very respectful with each other. But I think on the first fight, he would I think he was I, I got more in his head especially because he wasn't able to make the weight i think everything messed up with his head a little bit for sure mm -hmm. um did you feel there was any major difference to you in your performance or or in his performance between the first and second fights i would say uh his strategy was totally different you know uh from the first fight to the second fight and he seemed to be a bit faster and looking, he was he was just like when I when I saw he coming on his eye, he was just like he really wanted to knock me out, you know. He really on the first fight he was walking back the whole time, just like defensive the whole fight. On this fight, he wanted to knock me out, you know. And I saw that very early on the fight because he started to push me back very early on the fight. So, but. I felt like on his strategy, he didn't expect me to to go to the championship rounds, you know, with what, about what I could hear from his corners and everything. They want to make the fight long. And I think that was a big mistake because he could, I, I knew he couldn't fight five rounds with me, you know. So he started the fight very early trying to knock me out. But when he saw he couldn't knock me out and the fight goes on and I get... 
I was growing between rounds, and then it was when he's he'd see like, oh, I can't stop this guy, you know. Yeah, he he did seem more aggressive. You know, it seemed like he landed a few more punches this time. You took them like a champ, of course, but you know some of those were loud. Were you expecting that going into the fight, considering you fought him before? Were you surprised at all? Did that surprise you? That more aggressive strategy this time. Um, my coach told me that he would do that. You know, so we was kind of like expecting him to pressure a little bit, then trying to take downs. So that was all expected, but I was honestly I was more surprised with uh, how much damage he was able to take. You know, even like on the end of the first round, I almost I landed like maybe like ten straight shots straight to his face. He didn't like block any of those. You know, and he he wouldn't fail. He could he wouldn't he wouldn't go down. You know, he was just like he was taking it all. So I think if there was something that really impressed me on him coming for this fight was just like his determination to knock me out you know because even though he was trying to knock me out i was landing on him and i was landing some very clean shots you know and he was still keep coming he come for four rounds and then he give up you know so he's the the amount of damage that he was able to take definitely impressed me a lot especially when you are used to knocking guys with the same blows in the first round, you know, and then you give the same blows to the same guys over and over and over and he don't fail. That that was impressive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you, of course, had the performance of a true champion. Your strikes caused his right eye to swell shut. His corner called it quits between the fourth and the fifth round. You know, uh, you, you mentioned his toughness, his aggressiveness, but was there any point that you knew, that's it, I'm going to finish this, he's going to quit? Uh, or did you think at some point, you know, that it's, it's going to go the full five rounds? Um, after like the, the first round, uh, because he was in a very hard place on the first, on the beginning of the round, and then he started to slow down uh, on the end of the round, I knew uh, he would do the same for the second round. You know, he would start strong and then slow down. Uh, so I knew like coming for the fight i knew he couldn't fight five rounds with me so I, I i i knew i would keep growing with rounds you know so i was no i was not uh i was not really like worried about like going five rounds with him you know but actually like was funny because going for the for the fifth round i thought actually was the fourth round you know so in my head i had two more rounds with him you know even even when uh i went backstage <laughs> after the fight I talk with my coach, I say, I told you I was going to stop him on the third round. And then they were like, no, that was four rounds. I said, really? <laughs> it was four rounds? So in my head, yeah. I had two extra rounds, you know? Yeah, yeah, I guess when you're in the moment. Now, now the first time you fought Lineker, you were in a cage. The second time in a ring. Do you have a preference for one or the other? Does it make any difference at all to you? Man, uh, it makes a difference, you know? It's not the same when you fight ring in the cage because uh, this uh, is a circle you know the one championship is uh, is not even a cage it's a circle and uh, like you have like the the walls you know on the ring you doesn't have that so it's a bit different but i i don't really care you know if if you have to find a ring i'll find a ring you know if i have to find a cage i'll find a cage so it doesn't really matter and now that you're a champion, of course, everybody wants a chance at the gold around your waist. But it seems like your target is set on someone as well. You immediately called out Stefan Lohman. He's responded recently, being quoted as saying, I'm ready to accept the challenge. I would love to fight him anytime, anywhere. He also said he's going to take the belt from you. Now, the man is an obvious contender. He's ranked as the number three bantamweight fighter. Quite a challenge. What do you expect from Lohman if or when you are to meet? And how do you respond to him saying he's going to take your belt? Yeah, uh, besides him, I don't see anybody else be deserving to fight for the title, you know. He deserved to fight for the title. He come like uh, from, he was champion different promotion, then he come to one. He was meant to fight Lineker once. The fight didn't happen, but he was meant to fight Lineker. Uh, so I, that's why I called him, you know. Uh, before I become champion, there was people like ducking me, you know, saying to pretending there was a scene, I, I'm challenging them and stuff. I don't want to be the, the this type of champion, you know. 
I'm the champion that uh, I will see who deserves to fight for the title and then I'll fight then. That's why I call Luman after the fight. And it's simple, man. I'm going to knock him out, you know. He's going to have the same end of his teammates and that's a fact, you know. He can say whatever he wants. You know, he's, he got no chance with me, you know. I'm going to knock him out and then I'm going to go to the next contender. We're excited to see it. Do you have any idea when that might be? When we'll be seeing you back in the circle? Now, you mentioned you've, you've sustained some injuries from the previous fight. When do you expect to be recovered, training again, and fighting once more? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure now when I'm going to be able to train. Uh, because doctors say sometimes, but uh, I think uh, I recover very fast. You know, my body recovers very fast. But I hope... I, I, I'm, I hope I'm going to be ready as soon as possible, you know, like I, want, I like to be active, I don't like to wait, you know, so as soon as I'm able to train, I'm going to start to train and get ready for the fight, you know, but I hope as soon as possible, I still want to do two fights this year, you know, so I'm definitely going to gonna do my best to be able to be back as soon as possible. And we hope so as well. Wishing you a speedy recovery. Fabricio Andrade, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the one bantamweight world champion. Such an honor to speak with you, sir. We look forward to your next title fight. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you, brother. See you next time.